Hey, hey, welcome to the Lifestyle Creation Podcast, designing life on your terms. I'm your host, Jamie Thurber, and I'm an expert operations manager, productivity queen, mindset, business, and lifestyle coach. Basically, getting shit done is my jam. And I believe in the power of intentional living and in real conversations that can shift your perspective, create habits, and ultimately achieve the freedom that you want in every area of your life. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Holy smokes, it's been a hot minute since we've recorded, right? Oh, boy. A lot has transpired since the last time I was here with you, and I will unpack all of that at some point. I wanted to just create a really quick welcome back message to you and a welcome to this new beautiful year that we have It is officially 2023. Can you freaking believe it? Like what is happening? Feels crazy. But I really just wanted to take a minute and first of all, thank you for continuing to be here as a listener and tuning in. I appreciate you very much and for letting me be human, for allowing me to show up in the ways that I need to and to retreat when I need to retreat. And I think a lot of my own personal journey of 2022 was creating flexibility and allowing the moments for the humanness that I needed um, and not squandering any of the moments that I was given. I learned a lot from Mac, my dog getting diagnosed with cancer and going through his treatment with him and then, you know, enjoying the world with him as long as we could. And then I learned a lot in the grief of his passing and in what to do and what not to do and what to allow and space for myself and those kinds of things. Something that I'm extremely proud of has been the ability to really take steps back and say, wait a minute, is this one of those places where I need more flexibility? Or is this one of those places where it's good to step back into that like, let's take control, let's get shit done, let's do the things kind of version of myself, right? It's, I truly believe everything happens for a reason and I believe that everything transpired the way it did with Mac because I needed to learn some things. It also is the reason why I finally received a diagnosis for my, you know, lifelong symptoms I've been dealing with If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go back and listen to the episode that's called My Life Sentence. It talks a bit about that, but I don't think I've told you guys that because of Mac and because of how sick I got when I first found out he had cancer, I sought out different professionals and different things, and we did a ton of testing. I had to have all the tests done, like the yeah, lots of prep, lots of things, and um, we ruled out a lot of very serious, like life threatening things, which was good. And in the process, I learned what was really going on within my body. And for the first time ever, had a doctor offer to help me um, lessen my symptoms. So, for the first time in twenty years, I would wake up. I'm waking up with no nausea, and I'm now. That comes with a whole different set of, of things to explore and get used to, right? Our bodies, we are creatures of habit, whether we want to admit it or not. And so now everyone's like, oh my God, how amazing is your life? Like you don't have these symptoms. I'm like, dude, it's a game changer. And the work still continues because now I have to really unravel and unfold all of the precautionary things that became so normal for me to do to make sure that I didn't get sick or to try to feel as little um, of the sickness as I could. So now I get to really expand and and really reevaluate everything. It's like a whole different walk that I'm doing now and really um, giving myself a good amount of time to see what of the symptoms I have are secondary to the root cause and what is um, something else that might need attention. And I really have a feeling that a lot of these things are like that I'm still feeling like lots of pain and and some of those things are really um, related to, you know, all those years of having to compensate for some really tough things day in and day out, you know. 
So I'll keep you posted on that. And as we go along, I am finally at a place where I can talk about Mac without being sad. I think I'm going to record a whole separate podcast explaining how I think we need to learn to grieve differently. This is something that my coach, Jesse, had mentioned to me several times, and I just wasn't ready to receive it. And I'm glad that I did it differently this time. And I allowed myself this space and, you know, brought Tony and I closer together, um, which is beautiful and just different things like that. But I think the other thing that's exciting is as we lost Mac, it was like the 4th of November. I promised myself that I would take as much time as I needed. And I did. I took care of my clients. But aside from that, I was taking care of myself. Is, which meant sleeping and organizing my face off because that makes me feel better and letting myself just be taking lots of walks. I joined a new gym, like just different things like that. And I promised myself that I would not have a stressful holiday season. And I didn't. I had a great holiday season. It was fun. It was enjoyable. I did all kinds of crazy, silly things. If you follow me on social media, then you saw like we did a gingerbread house competition. We did like several different Christmas light things. I have like seven Christmas trees in my house that are still up right now, even though it's January 16th because they bring me so much joy. If you're watching the video, you can see it. I did host a dinner party last weekend. And so I really wanted my Christmas decorations still be up for that. So I will be taking them down this weekend just because it is time. But I like went on a spree and bought a bunch of pencil trees and have them everywhere. And it's just, yeah, I said I refused to stress myself out this year. And I decided that I was going to create the joy that we needed because we were missing so much of it because of Mac. I think it's interesting when you think about people who are entrepreneurs and work from home because our relationship with our pets is just a little different, right? Because our entire life, all day, every day, like they're there. Like I was always a crazy dog mom, even when I had to leave and go to work during the day. But it's like a different level of loss when you work from home and you genuinely spend like every waking moment and sleeping moments with this being and then they're just not there anymore. You know, like we had Christmas traditions together, him and I did, and like all these things. So things are good. Things are good. And I hope the same for you. I am revamping some things in my own life and rewriting even more of these old bullshit rules that God only knows where they came from. Actually, I know where a lot of them came from, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that I will not squander the lessons learned last year. I will not go backwards at all. I refuse to. Everything is different now, and I get to embrace that and see what it unfolds as, which is what I'm currently focusing on. You all know that I don't set New Year's resolutions. I don't believe it is the proper time to do that. We're still in hibernation mode as humans. Our body is still seasonally connected, whether we want to believe it or not. And this is still the time of hibernation and reflection and wisdom, not the time of like planting seeds and and starting new things. The only thing I do January is I do like to decide a word for the year. I do like to create some like vision of things I want to call in over the next calendar year. And this year it was very much like, healthy dogs and healthy parents and a healthy, strong me and no sickness and, you know, some other little things like I want to put body armor on my Jeep and you know, I want to travel more now that I'm not sick and I have like a savings goal and things like that. But it's all very visual and that's important to me. I like to look at the visuals because – and I put them in my office – and just trust and then do the work every day and just trust that those things are coming to me when they need to or when I'm ready for them. The word of the year thing, it's funny because everybody else usually has theirs right around the first of the year. And I usually take almost till the end of January because I'm still celebrating Christmas during that time. (laughs) And this year, I believe I've landed on liberation. Considering that I am living a completely different experience, 
that I've ever had before uh, currently. I think liberation is a really beautiful word for that, which I'm sure I'll expand on more as we go along. But really the whole purpose here, my friend, was just to really pop in and say hi and that I hope that you're well and that you've had a good start to the new year. And if you haven't, don't chalk it up to a bad 2023. Jeez Louise, please don't do that. I'm already seeing people do that. I'm like, we're fucking 16 days in, guys. Like, don't chalk up the whole year to being crappy already. I mean, come on. So I definitely think there's some room for us to uh, give ourselves some grace and take a breath and enjoy your hibernation. If you have lots of ideas, write them all down. It's not the time to hop into action and force yourself. Forcing... Um, isn't always a good thing. Trust me. So there will be more. I have more ideas and more words about to come out um, here shortly. So thank you for being here. Turn on your notifications if you can for new episodes. We always appreciate that. And then if you've been a listener and you feel so inclined to leave us a review, you can do so over on iTunes um, or Apple Podcasts. And we do love that. That is the only way you really get rankings these days for podcasts. So as you know, I personally produce this, um, so it is not it is not funded by anyone other than me. So I do appreciate you taking the time to share the podcast with other people or and leave a review. It does make a big difference. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>